Now I want to tell you something related with Mendel's law of segregation. And before this, we have to understand about his experiment of tall pea plant and dwarf pea plant. What he did previously, he took a pure tall pea plant and he crossed it with pure dwarf pea plant. And pure tall pea plant means it has both the genes having the character of being tall. And pure dwarf means the both the genes are carrying the character of being dwarfies. And he went crossed with the pure dwarf pea plant with pure dwarf pea plant. What he found, this gene separate from each other, this team combined with this team, then we'll have this type of gene, another set of gene. And this team, when combines with this small team, then another set of gene and this T combines with another one and another set of gene this way these are the possibilities of the set of gene in every set what is saying one of the T is capital which carries the character of being tallness another is a small which carries the character of being dwarfness it means all of them have similar genes they are they have similar genes and this is called hybrid tall. Because tallness is dominant, when tall pea plant is cross pollinated with dwarf pea plant, then all the pea plant in first generation he found tall. The reason is very simple tallness is dominant and dwarfness is recessive. That's why this pea plant, which contains both the character of tallness and dwarfness, but tallness is dominant, that's why in external appearance, all of them were tall. And again, he further uh, self pollinated this pea plant of first generation. And look at this, let's say there we are taking this to pea plant. This tea, when this gene combines with this, then we'll have this type, this set of gene. And when this gene combines with this one, we'll have this another set. And this one, if combines with this one, another set. And the last one, this and this, when combines, then we'll have another set like this. Now, looking at their genetic uh, setting, this is pure tall like this. These two are hybrid tall like this. And this is pure dwarf. Now, what is seen, he noticed that when, uh, when they form gamete, at the time of formation of gamete, two genes, at that time gene was not named as gene, he told two factor, nowadays we are saying gene. At the time of formation of gamete, two genes or factors for a character separate from each other. Here, look at this, I am separating this way. And two genes or two factors for a character separate from each other. And these separated genes again rearrange themselves further to form another set of genes. And again, look at this. These two genes are he told factor separates from each other. And because of their separation, this combines when with this one, then another set of gene forms. That's when they separate from each other at the time of formation of gamete. This was a great finding of Mendel of that time. He told that the two genes or two factors for a character always separate from each other when they form gamete. Gamete is formed by mucous cell division. And this can be uh, recognized as Mendel's one of the important law. It is called Mendel's law of segregation. This way, according to Mendel's law of segregation, two factors or genes for a character separate from each other at the time of formation of gametes. When they form gamete, these two genes which are lying together in a plant separate from each other at the time of only formation of gametes. This is called law of segregation. That's why this law is again uh, uh, told as law of purity of gametes also. Why it is called law of purity of gametes? Look at this first generation. This is first generation. In first generation, capital T and small t are together in this plant. It means tallness and darkness are together. But 
At the time of formation of gamete, this T separates with this, this T separates with this. And a gamete receives one of these T, capital T or small t, capital T or small t. That's why this, gam this gamete, when uh, combines with another gamete, this will combine with this one, and this will combine with this one, this will combine with this one, and this combines with this one. Now another set of gene is formed. Like this. Now, what he told exactly, they remain together. Which one remain together? This tallness and dwarfness remain together in first generation, but they never blend up with each other and they never give intermediate product uh, in the offspring. Uh, he mean to say that tallness remains always tall, dwarfness remains always dwarf. They may be present in a plant together, tallness and dwarfness, but they never uh, blend up with each other, they never mix with each other, and they never give intermediate product. I mean to say, the offspring never be uh, the height, neither too tall nor too dwarf. The middle height is not possible. According to him, these factors are pure for their own identity, for pure for their own character. They never blend up with each other. That's why the same law is also called law of purity of gametes. In the same way, we can say this way also, if a red flower pea plant is cross-pollinated with white flower pea plant, they never give intermediate product like pink colored uh, flower. This is because red remains always red. It is pure for being red. And white remains always white and it is pure for being white whether they lie together red and white gene of red and white they may lie together but they never blend up with each other when gamete forms they segregate from each other they separate from each other this is this way it is also called law of purity of gametes